So hello, everyone. Um, my name is Dmitry Barinov, um, and uh, I am from a security um, organization. And what I will talk about, I will talk about um, our uh, project called TrustBlock and um, how it is related to the Hyperledger uh, Foundation and on our plans on developing uh, basically interoperable identity and data exchange solutions. So a little bit about Secure Key. Uh, this is just to show that we, have, we are not new in the industry. Uh, we have been doing identity solutions for a while. Uh, we are running a number of the, uh, we are running an identity network based on the decentralized um, solution, decentralized ledger and uh, hyperledger fabrics in 2019 in Canada. We have millions of users on the network right now, so it's quite successful. And uh, this year, we have deployed a new solution um, called TrustBlock, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. So basically, uh, it is very clear uh, to us, and it is very clear to the identity community um, and the data exchange community that interoperability is the key. And the main drivers uh, for interoperability um, standards come from W3C, from the DIFF Foundation, and from IETF. Um, and uh, the, the new uh, solutions uh, in the data exchange and identity world would require uh, vendor independence uh, and would require ledger independence as well. So that um, customers of these solutions uh, are not tied to any particular vendor for any particular uh, piece of technology. Uh, and uh, they can migrate from vendor to vendor and uh, obviously can make their own operational decisions and trust decisions as well. So for us, um, it was very clear working with our partners that um, you know, we must enable uh, standards in the systems and uh, the main standards are verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers. And um, obviously it was also very clear for us that uh, commercial solutions would require a number of other uh, com uh, community related and community based standards being implemented in that. Right? such as uh, we definitely need to uh, take a close look at the implementation of the HTTP issue and verify APIs, because this is actually a very normal way of how uh, uh, enterprise organizations communicate uh, on the internet. We need to uh, be very careful uh, about using standard um, credential definitions, presentation request language is very, very important uh, in many um, floats uh, of the solution. And then, of course, the proper security um, associated with uh, uh, cloud identity management services, uh, encrypt data vaults, uh, key management services uh, are very important. Um, and another very important, uh, of course, is ability to uh, rely on the W3C standard for the universal wallet and for uh, standard integration methods such as OADC or NAP. So what we have done, we have uh, introduced uh, the TrustBlock project. Um, and the TrustBlock project uh, basically uh, has several uh, very ambitious goals. Um, it has a goal of providing digital governance and interoperability for trusted identities, but also to uh, provide interoperable framework that uh, allows issuance and verification of credentials, user management of identity, and uh, moderation uh, of uh, the flows, it was very important for us. So basically, we um, uh, st started building the project. Project is an open source um, project. It is uh, described. Uh, it, it is on GitHub. Um, it has um, uh, registered uh, two registered actually uh, did methods. One is called TrustBlock, another one is called Orb. And uh, what was very important, uh, what became very evident to us in the middle of the project that we wanted to have um, an orb um, method uh, to extend the site tree protocol on which we rely on uh, to ensure that we uh, can offer ledger agnostic deployments. 
obviously we had to support the adapters uh, to ease the integrations and um, we also wanted to uh, provide um, options for user chosen data vaults uh, that can also uh, offer different services and where the users can uh, securely uh, store their data. Uh, and of course, these uh, options should include the option of storing the data on device or in the cloud or at the trusted provider. Uh, another important uh, trustable characteristic is that we are ensuring um, uh, a classic uh, verifiable credential uh, data interaction method and where the data is issued to uh, the device, the verifiable credential is issued to the device. I shouldn't call it data, of course. And uh, we also support um, a method which is very important for many use cases where we support just-in-time exchanges. So um, obviously, we are we have been involved with Hyperledger Foundation for a number of years. Our first uh, engagement was um, where we started uh, using the Fabric code and contributing to the Fabric code. Uh, but um, for the interoperability, uh, we um, contributed significantly to the ARIES framework goal. Uh, and we based um, our Traslog verifiable credential services and wallets uh, on ARIES framework goal. Uh, another important point is um, that um, we're using basically a ledger as a route of trust for the DIDs. Uh, but we also wanted to ensure in TrustBlock that organizations have a choice. And this is actually, again, why we introduced this ORB method uh, and ORB functionality, uh, where um, implementations can be uh, ledger independent. Another important point is that TrustBlock is using DITCOM implementation to allow data exchanges uh, with governance and mediation. And the uh, DITCOM, of course, is based on ARIES RFP and DIF work. Um, and right now, we are working on basically allowing communication between W3C compliant systems and indie based systems, um, ensuring that we can add privacy mediation. We are um, working on integration between ARIES framework Go and Hyperledger ARIES Cloud Agent Python, or ACAPI, as it's known, right? We're obviously uh, very much interested in extending the support uh, uh, to the privacy based on the BBS Plus, um, and so on and so forth. Mm, so the demo that I wanted to show before we get into the any questions uh, period, and the demo is actually very important, I wanted to talk a little bit about the demo. So all our demo, practical demos, they're based um, uh, on the artifacts uh, that are developed through the Department of Homeland Security SVAP project, where we are working in partnership with a uh, number of companies, including Danube Tech, Digital Bazaar, Matter, Mavenet, Sferity, Transmute Industries, and where we demonstrate that uh, interoperability based on W3C test suite. Uh, so the example that we are going to show, uh, we are show, we are going to show this interoperability based on um, that includes an example where we selected disclosure of some attributes on the network uh, that leverages BBS Plus, and uh, we also obviously developing, uh, we we'll, we're also um, using the technology um, which is uh, based on the de development draft standards. So we do include uh, decentralized identifiers, universal resolver, credential handler APIs, uh, and verifiable, uh, verifiable presentation request specifications uh, and BCH TCP APIs. So maybe now we can, we can show the demo now and see um, if uh, there are any questions or follow-ups to this. So the demo is the video, hopefully you can see it well. My name is Mike Barrett, I'm SecureKey. Our goal at SecureKey is to ensure that people can efficiently prove their identity to access the services they need. Our digital identity network allows people to verify their identity 
by leveraging existing credentials to access the services they want. With this, we are putting people in control of their data. Verifiable credentials play a critical role in our digital identities, as documents such as passports, driver's licenses, and birth certificates are regularly used to verify identities. As part of this, we are thrilled to be working with the United States Department of Homeland Security and their SBIP program. This demonstration will show a multi-credential presentation with selective disclosure, featuring a permanent resident card and a vaccination certificate credential using our trust block platform. So we're all set. It's time to fly. He decides to go on a little vacation. He's gone through and completed his reservation. And this particular small airline is taking advantage of the fact that there are digital wallets out there and issuing a digital booking reference so that they don't have to manage their own airline. He's linking his wallet and collecting his booking. That's it. He's all set to go. Time passes and it's time to check in. There are two options for Taylor Charter flights. You can do a digital check-in, in which case you will need a compatible wallet, and your booking credential, a real TSA real ID, vaccination proof. There is a manual option, but because it has to check some back-end databases, they can charge you $25 for that. It'd be better to go with digital web. He's going to check his wallet to make sure he has all of his credentials in order. All right. On this check in. This is a final information check. Do you have your booking reference? Do you have a TSA real ID for which the US government qualifies? And do you have a vaccination proof from a qualified issuer? They don't need the whole vaccination proof. They only need to know that you have had that search. There are two options. You can proceed in the browser, or if you have a mobile wallet, you can scan a QR code to use your mobile app. We know we have a browser wallet, so we'll proceed with this. Here's the wallet review screen. Booking reference will be passed over. Permanent resident card will be passed over. And the COVID credential will be passed over, but only these fields. Issuing country and the name. That's the limited disclosure capability of that PBS Plus credential. All of these have been now verified. And now go on to his get his board. What's next for Trustblock? We'll be working on a cleaner UI, we'll be working on in person and offline use cases, and we'll be working on a native wallet experience. To learn more, go check out our GitHub pages. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. So uh, th that was the demo, and in the demo, we were showing basically the um, uh, web wallet uh, implementation uh, on the TrustBlock system. And once again, the system is completely interoperable and uh, based on the WCC credentials and has been tested uh, against other vendor implementations of the technology. So it's not the same uh, use case kit. Obviously, there is a TrustBlock channel. You can see more videos if you're interested of this interoperability testing. And there are more videos on the capabilities on the system as well. And uh, if you uh, have any questions or would like to follow up, I would be more than happy to be in the, please contact me directly, uh, Dmitry Baryanov at securekey.com. Uh, with that, uh, the session is over. If uh, there are any questions, uh, I would be more than happy to answer them. If not, uh, please feel free to follow up again. I don't see any questions in the Q&A. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for, for coming over. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.